ተናስተልኝ አይቲዮስ ሚዲያ ተከታታይስ ዛሬ በስቱዲዮአችን ውስጥ ጻፊ እንደ መጻፊ ጻፈች እንደውም እዚህ ሲያትል ውስጥ የምትኖር ከዛ ማልፎ ዩኒቨርሲቲ ኦፍ ዋሽንግተን ምስታስተምር የነበረች ሳንድራ ምትባል ትገኛለች እሷን እዚህ አምጥተን የስለ ጻፈችው መጻፍና እንደውም ስላላት አንድ አንድ ሐሳቦች ከኛ ጋር ውይይት ታረጋለች ይሄን እንግዲህ እንትከታተሉ እንጋብዛችኋለን uh thank you it is it is media program uh, and uh, the people who are watching all the time we have some people coming here and talk about different issues this time we have a writer also a teacher a professor and a friend also i know her for a long time uh, she's going to tell us a little bit about herself and also we're going to talk about the books so first thank you for coming thank you for having me yes and uh, would you tell us a little bit about you and uh, what you uh, anything about you want to tell us about yourself oh <laughs> um well uh, i i was born in south africa and left there in um 1967 and uh moved to england and then came to the united states and um i i was brought up um under the apartheid era in the, during that apartheid era and uh So when I came to America I was um I was actually very ashamed of being South African because mm-hmm. you know things were so the government was so terrible in South Africa and um I started writing about South Africa and uh, at that time I I did a lot of book reviews for Seattle Times and um I wrote about South African books and uh gradually as i as i got to know more about south africa i learned more about the other countries of mm-hmm. africa and you know the broader picture of colonialism and um, imperialism and so on and uh so that that's a little bit about myself okay but so you came you moved to seattle and then now uh, you started working at the University of Washington right away after all um, those things. So. Uh no, I I went back to school mm-hmm. and to get my PhD. Okay. And um and then I I started um teaching Afri- well my area is African literature. Mm-hmm. So I actually came to the history of all, all the countries through the literature. And um you know literature gives you an idea of of culture history everything mm-hmm. and uh so you know i was teaching um for example um nega nega mesleka yeah uh-huh. you know i taught his wow. his work in class mm-hmm. uh from ethiopia mm-hmm. and i taught um uh, nuruddin farah the somali mm-hmm. writer uh and you know i i I just got gradually more and more interested in the the area and then um I met I met um some Eritrean people who mm-hmm. subsequently became very close friends mm-hmm. and they persuaded me to to go to to Eritrea mm-hmm. and um which I did in in uh, ni- uh 2001 and just became um interested in in the country and from there you know with Ethiopia and Somalia the countries that was involved in mm-hmm. um so that so that was my sort of entry into the the area okay um but the book is not um it it doesn't valorize like one the Eritreans for example mm-hmm. um it it tells a story of each country mm-hmm. and each of the main ethnic groups okay in the countries okay i look at the title of the book called seeking salam yeah uh, so the book tells a lot i don't want to say what it means, but would you tell us a little bit about that um well you know um going back to the south african issue mm-hmm. um when i was living there and when and certainly when i got out when i saw how easy it was for um a government to suppress other people's stories mm-hmm. you know i i thought that the same sort of thing could happen 
here in, um, with the, the Somali, Ethiopian and Eritrean stories. Mm -hmm. And because one of the things that was, was happening is, um, you know, because there, there, there's still a conflicts going on in each of the three countries, it keeps alive the, the enmity, you know, mm -hmm. animosity. And so it's hard for people to move on. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just I felt it was important to, um, you know, for people to try and work together mm -hmm. and uh, um, not to perpetuate, yeah, you know, the hatred into, you know, into the, the generations that mm -hmm. were going to come afterwards. So yeah. that's, that's very interesting. And um, when I look at the book and read a little bit about it, and you interviewed a lot of... Uh, people from Eritrea, Ethiopia, and some Somalians. Yeah. And they did a lot of research. I hope you know, you've been doing a lot of research. And also, you would, like you said, you went to Eritrea. Uh, and also, probably, you read a lot of books about Ethiopia and Somalia. Yeah. Um, most people, I think, on this book, the one you put on, they've been living here for a long time. Right. It was hard for you to find those people, or just um, it was easier? I just want to know about um, that. You know, I, I started off with people I knew okay. who recommended other people. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't claim that this book is representative, mm -hmm. you know, of all the different um, people here mm -hmm. in, in Seattle. Um, but, uh, it, it, you know, it gives an idea, at least of those people's views. Mm -hmm. And they were... They were they were keen to tell their stories, um, mm -hmm. so I, I you know I didn't find it difficult. Although I in in Portland was a little bit more a little bit harder because I didn't know that many people, mm -hmm. um, and so they they didn't know who I was or they didn't you know they they didn't know if they could trust me. Um, but but in Seattle I found that uh, people were willing to to tell their stories. Um, in part, I think, because they wanted their stories witnessed, okay. you know, um, and in the case of, of, you know, whole groups that had been suppressed, mm -hmm. you know, they, they wanted to, um, you know, read us, sort of uh, make their histories known to, to the public, you know. Yeah. And, and people want to pay homage to to um, people who died mm -hmm. in the wars. Mm -hmm. You know, war is a terrible thing and, you know, everyone has suffered. Exactly, you're right. So, like, looking for these people, people, some of them, you know them. So it took some time to find that. And then all this, I think, took you a long time, I hope. Uh, yes. When did you start this book? That's what I'm trying to well, get. Well, <laughs> I, I started interviewing uh, probably at the end of 2004, 2004. 2005. Um, what took so long was, uh, Interviewing takes a long time yeah. because I don't interview a person just once. Mm -hmm. You know, you go back again for more information, mm -hmm. you know. And with some people, maybe four times, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then after I'd written, um, written, uh, you know, then I had to transcribe it. Yes. And transcribing takes, takes forever because you can't make a mistake and leave out something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a person's exact words. So mm -hmm. you have to be very, very careful. And so that takes a long time. And then um, I also had promised that everything I wrote, I would show the people I interviewed first. Okay. So they had a chance to, you know, to look at what I'd quoted them saying, mm -hmm. and they could either, you know, they could edit it if they wanted, or they could say, I don't want it in at all, or that I don't want to be mm -hmm. in the book at all, or, you know, use a pseudonym. Mm -hmm. Um, or make me anonymous, mm -hmm. or you know that kind of thing. Yeah. And then, um, because it was a university press, it had to be peer reviewed mm -hmm. by scholars who who are familiar with the material. Mm -hmm. And that took another year, wow. <laughs> you know, because yeah. you send it out, and then you've got to wait till they've got time to read it, and then they send it back, and then you've got to answer their, you know, whatever mm -hmm. criticisms they make. So it just, it just took a long, long time. The actual writing didn't take that long, except for the fact that I had to shorten it a couple of times because mm -hmm. it was, it was, 
it was I had lots and lots of history in yeah. Yeah. So you're in a way you're a historian to me when I look at this thing and then at the same <laughs> well, time. I'm not a historian. Really, really it just appears that because yeah. you're recording something that right. uh, people can use in the future. And also this I don't know how you what do you call this book now? It's not a novel, we know that. No, no. It's uh, not it, a it, history it is book. It's a difficult category yeah. because it's sort of, you know, as I say, I'm a literature person. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and these were sort of oral literature, oral mm -hmm. stories, okay. you know. So that's the closest I can get. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm not a historian, even though there's a lot of history in here, but I'm sure, you know, the historians who would find that I haven't done something as historians should, yeah. you know. <laughs> but, um, but it will be a book that is going to help a lot of people to research for research. You know, some of it. Because yes, I, I hope so. I can see the dates and the people. You know, uh, I think it will be a good um, research book to me. I can see it that yeah. way. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to ask you is: Is this book available everywhere, or just? Uh, yes, um, it uh, you can in most bookstores. I think um, you can also get it from University of Washington Press. Mm -hmm. You can get it from Amazon. Okay online from Borders, mm -hmm. Barnes and Noble, um, and um, there's an independent booksellers okay. online site as well. And so you can get it a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Is this your first book or is this? Uh, it's not my first book, okay. but it's a first on this, on this, in this area. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if they have somebody Google your name, they probably find a lot of books. Here no, not a lot of books. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a lot of people do these days. Yeah. You know, they go on the computer and Google the person. Right. And write it and right, right. But I, this is a very, yeah, not only as good book, it's very interesting because you kind of get into those communities like East African communities, especially Somalia, Ethiopia, and Eritrea. Mm. And we have a lot of them here yeah. in this community. Yeah. And, um, is a is a lot to write about this community. So, oh, you know, yes. this is the first one I've well, seen uh, yes. for a long time because nobody right. is looking at us that way. You know, right. this is very. Um, I think it's a very good book, yeah. a, a yes. good start. Thank you. Yeah, and it's, a it's just a start. A start. Yeah. Yes, and uh, right. And, and, really and I'm sure that you know, ho or hopefully, people will build on this and yes. and write other books. Yeah, make us uh, the community open up a little bit to the yeah. larger community. You know, right. most of them we. Most of us we have our community, but we don't go out and get involved in the bigger community because right, right. that's not our culture, you know? Yeah. So books yeah. like this probably that. will make other people understand that we well, are. That's, that was my hope, you know, because mm -hmm. I, 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 I wanted in part to, to let Americans know a little bit about these communities, mm -hmm. you know, because I think they don't know. Exactly. Um, and, and also about... Um, this particular challenge to these communities. I mean, because, um, you know, the immigration process, mm -hmm. the refugee, you know, immigration process is, is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you've got housing, mm -hmm. um, education mm -hmm. of your children, um, getting jobs, employment, mm -hmm. all that sort of thing. But n nobody thinks of this other little, it's not a little challenge, but the, the challenge of having people who were your enemies in the home country, mm -hmm. you know, living here and contradicting your stories, because your stories are your, your identity. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a big challenge, because you, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you want to say, well, you know, this is who I am, you know, wow. and tell American people. Are you any, do you have any plan to travel uh, to Somalia or Eritrea uh, or Ethiopia I would love again? to go to Ethiopia now. <laughs> Ethiopia uh, now. I really would love to do that. Okay. So um, maybe I'll work on that. <laughs> That'd be good to bring the book with you and uh, yeah. have it available for people over there too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would like that. That's great. Um, yeah, um, I think, you know, you, you wrote this and I think Africans ourselves, we need to write. I think we need to tell our stories. Exactly. Because most of the time, you know, I know you did a good job on this one. Yeah. Uh, but, but I'm an outsider. Exactly, yeah. yeah. We need to have workshops. Like right. you, like a person like yeah. you already wrote a book, give ideas for our community, mm. come to the community center or something like that. Right. Some of them, they have a lot of things to say. Also, yeah. they have, like you say, it's oral. 
if you don't write it right now, yeah. it's going to be gone. You know, right. people die. Absolutely. You know, this, everything dies together. I so, think it would be a wonderful project to yeah. get young people telling their stories. Yeah. You know, and you recording them, mm -hmm. and um, you know, having record on right. record. On record, exactly. You know, because it's so easy for the stories to disappear. Yeah. You know, depending on who who's in power, That's true. they can suppress. It. You know, yeah. any ethnic group stories, any religious story, you know. So mm. it's, um, having them recorded is... is Tell us,